You're watching 13 on your side. Demonstrations continue downtown nearly two weeks after a Grand Rapids police officer shot and killed 26-year-old Patrick Leoya. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Elena Holland. Activists have held marches and rallies for the past five days, calling for the officer who killed Leoya to be fired. Grand Rapids police re released video this week showing the officer shooting Leoya in the back of the head after a traffic stop. Tonight's rally started around 5 o'clock and lasted hours, with demonstrators marching all across downtown Grand Rapids. Their tenure size, Justin Bachman, has been following the march for several hours. So, Justin, how many people would you say turned out? Hey, Elena, good evening. We have seen a ton of people. Hundreds have been gathering and going through downtown. And actually, we just saw the final people leave. A few organizers have just walked away. And it's an important spot that they walked away from. If we look, you will see that sign right there, Brianna Taylor Way. This is not the first time that they have gathered and rallied and marched for black people that have been killed by police. Patrick Leoya now here in our hometown of Grand Rapids. They say that it is something that hits too close to home. Now there has been a lot that happened tonight. It was a beautiful march is the words that the organizers have used to describe it. There were some run ins some scrapes with the police, but there was no violence that broke out at any point. A little bit of tension in the air, yes, but any violence, absolutely not. Now that tension was something that did raise a little bit of suspicion for some of the people that were organizing the march, one of them that we caught up with. And they say that the police were there a little bit of an antagonistic force. And they say that next time they come out, they're hoping that's not going to be the case. If anything, they were the ones that were sitting up there wasting taxpayers' dollars, having to follow us, playing cat and mouse, and we were doing nothing but peacefully protesting and standing in solidarity with uh, Patrick's family. So. Maybe that's something that they need to regroup and think about. Now, today's march started at 515 and the last people just left hours of gathering, but they marched around Grand Rapids for four hours and then they came right back here to Rosa Park Circle for a block party to celebrate Patrick's life and to dance the way that he loved to express himself. Live in Grand Rapids, I'm Justin Bachman, 13 on your side. Justin, thank you. Grand Rapids City Manager released a statement yesterday in preparation for today's demonstrations. He says he expects more protests and marches in the coming days, and the city supports residents exercising their First Amendment rights. He added that activists, community leaders, and the family of Patrick Leoya continue to call for calm and peace. Their tenure side's Keely Lovern was also downtown tonight. She shares how the focus was about keeping the peace and keeping Patrick Leoya's name at the forefront of the rally. Hundreds of voices were heard marching through downtown Grand Rapids this evening. Say his name! Patrick Leoya! Say his name! Patrick Leoya! And before the march started, members of the Royal Black Panther Party made sure to emphasize to the crowd that they wanted to remain peaceful no matter what agitators might be out. Do not engage! Do not engage! I don't care what they say! The rally was very organized and leaders even had hand signals to communicate with people at the back of the large crowd. Their first stop was in front of the Grand Rapids Police Department. Then they made their way down Ottawa Avenue in front of City Hall. Then they stopped briefly outside of the Grand Rapids Art Museum. and from place to place, chants could be heard as they walked. <laughs> there were a few tense moments when police blocked off a couple of roads to the crowd of demonstrators. The first was Fulton Street near Van Andel Arena. Just around the corner, police also had part of Ottawa Avenue blocked for a period of time. Tonight's rally was largely focused on keeping the peace and remembering Patrick Leoya's name and demonstrators handed out these pamphlets to help do just that. Reporting in Grand Rapids, Keely Lovern, 13 on your side. 
The family was not in attendance tonight, but we heard from Patrick's mother and father earlier this week. This was after the release of the shooting video. Leoya's family and their attorneys called his death an execution and said the officer involved should be fired immediately. His mother, father, and one of his younger brothers all spoke during a press conference on Thursday. They called for justice with the help of an interpreter. We all saw the video. I saw it yesterday. And this is what they want to say, Matuliona video. It was the most horrifying thing I've ever said. In my life. I see to see an officer being on top of my son and to shoot him on the back of his head. And my heart is really broken. I'm asking justice for Patrick. I don't know what to do. I cannot stop myself but for crying. And as a terrorist, I was thinking maybe it was my son who was going to bury me. He will assist at my funeral. But what is so astonishing, I am the one burying my son. So now what comes next in the case? Michigan State Police are investigating the shooting, determining if use of deadly force was necessary. That's if the officer was at risk of death or great bodily harm. The investigation will be then turned over to the Kent County prosecutor. Chris Becker told us earlier this week police have released the video of the shooting, but there is still more evidence the prosecutor needs to review. The Kent County medical examiner says he completed Leoya's autopsy on April 4th, but is still awaiting toxicology and tissue results. That could take up to 60 days. The full autopsy report will be made available once MSP concludes its investigation. The family has expressed having a third party autopsy completed. Stay with 13 on your side as we continue to cover the shooting death of Patrick Leoya and the community demonstrations that have followed. To read more of our stories from throughout the week, head on over to 13onyourside.com or download our news app on your smartphone.